So if you're ready, then we can get started. We're ready. Did you bring anything for us to look at? Oh, no, we don't no. have any. We don't have okay. any. Then could we have Steve? Would you be the handout person for us? Oh, I can handle it. Yeah. So before we put our formal formal salary proposal on the table, we're just going to show you some stuff that. Uh, yeah. The first three handouts actually came from Dean David Blackwell from Uber College of Business, and he educated faculty about the state of our salaries. And let's just focus on those for a moment, and I'm going to wait until everybody has the handouts. There are three different handouts. Only the cover sheet is in color, and there should be enough for the audience. There should be something that looks like this, and then there's something that looks like this, followed by... So the first three that are on single paper came from the College of Business, Muma College of Business, where uh, the dean walked us through how we compare with our salaries with other AAU public uh, business schools. And the first one is named Size and Resource Metrics for Selected AAU Public B Schools. And um, some of the metrics here that you might want to look at is that um, we do have the highest number of students here at MUMA. We, in terms of faculty, considering that we have the highest number of students, we're not doing really well. But what really stands out is the school operating budget per full-time faculty member is the lowest of all. So here we have the highest enrollment, but we are also the university that has the lowest budget per faculty. And I just wanted to point that out before we go into our formal proposals. If you look at the next one that is called salary comparison, MUMA faculty versus selected AAU public business schools. You will see that for full professor, our average base salary is 200,000. Our comparison group statistics, the average base salary is 292,500. The medium, 290,000. And then standard deviation and so on. For associate professor, it's 173 average. You have 224,700, which would be the comparison group average. 237, which is the comparison group median base salary, and that goes all the way down to new hires. And then when we when we look at the new hires, and that's probably really um, important for a lot of faculty members, is how much more new faculty make than people who have been around helping build the institution. So, and then the last one shows some statistics. Considering that we have the highest number of students and really not the faculty to services students, of course, our, and we also have a much lower salary than other AAU schools, it is not, it does not come as a surprise that our research ranking isn't as high and our number of articles in the UTD, which is the University of Texas at Dallas, which is one of the standards that we're looking at in the business school is not the highest either. So these are things to concern. And then we did a little bit more digging and we came up with the UNC, the University of North Carolina, did a really nice comparison, mm -hmm. faculty average salaries by rank and research at doctoral universities and AAU universities. And the AAU universities are the ones that have the asterisks here. So if you look at them, the average salaries, and then you find us, page three, University of South, South Florida, we are ranked 104 with $144,000 average um, salary for a professor. And that is... The ones in the College of Business that I was talking about earlier, just a minute ago, they're so high because College of Business has higher salaries than the rest of the faculty. But if you look at the average professor salary at the University of South Florida, it's 144, it's 105, 200 for an associate and 96, 700 for an assistant professor. And then you compare that to the other AAU universities, so we're really, really at the bottom. And that is something that we are trying to address with our Article 23 formal salary proposal. So we looked at um, the average salaries. We're, we're looking at uh, the AAU, but we also looked at what other state universities here in Florida have done who have gotten a contract by now. So we are not going to go with the one-year CBA. It just takes too long to negotiate a contract to do this every year. So, and uh, what we're basically providing or suggesting for the next three years, each year, 
a 5% merit increase. So one for this year retroactively, one for the next academic year, and one for the last academic year of the contract. And another change that we put in here, and please remember that I'm also the grievance chair for the United Faculty of Florida. We had a number of grievances last time when the contract was passed that the university applied the merit increases together with the promotional increases. And we had a lot of upset faculty about that. So this time we're suggesting the merit increase will be applied after all other races, promotional races, out of cycle races, previously promised races, because yes, we do we, we did have a number of those as well have been factored into an employee's base pay. It will be effective upon ratification and will be retractive to the pay period that began on August 7, 24. And employees will release, uh, receive a lump sum payment no later than six weeks after ratification by the Board of Trustees. So, and we basically highlighted everything that we, um, so we're not doing bonuses, we're making, doing away from them. Bonuses are only one time. Our faculty have to serve. Uh, they have done a lot of good work helping us get the AAU because that is based on faculty uh, performance. And then we're doing this for all three years. And then what we also did is this time, because we had a lot of faculty contacting us that we do not do enough with compression and or inversion of uh, salaries. We have a lot of non-tenure earning faculty who are very, very much uh, concerned about that. So what we put in for each of the academic years covered by the contract, we put in $500,000 for specifically that purpose. And then I also received a lot of requests about, and we're not, and I talked to the FEA lawyer, so we are not, unless you put something on the table, we're not going to touch post-senior review because it is mandatory subject to bargaining. We know that from the hearing officers. We also know that FERC tends to overturn the rulings of its own hearing officers. But what faculty wanted to, to put in there is what uh, FSU faculty received. Because we just got bonuses here when you pass post-tenure review in terms of a number one exceeds expectations and meets expectations. And we decided, or faculty decided, that they want to have the same deal as the Florida State University and that actually was approved over there. So here we want to have for full professors who receive, for full professors and associate professors who receive a post-tenure review ranking of exceeds expectations, we want to have a 5% increase to their base salary. And for those who meet expectations, we are supporting a 3% increase to their salaries. And then, of course, we put the disclaimer in there, the UFF, USF chapter reserves, reserves the right to litigate PTR. So, and that's for 23, that we put on the table. All right, thank you. Does um, anyone have any questions? Yeah, I have two. One question is the 5% you're saying for August 7th, that's on top of the 3%. The faculty already got or you're saying it it's, it's on top of that because if you look at it the three percent came from the adi that we gave to the university during the last contract term and you did not spend that until the president decided to take that money and put it to good use so that is from the last contract three percent the three percent that the president gave us came from the last and i i checked with Gerard. That's what no, we I told. Didn't, I didn't say that. I have it in an email. We said it came from our discretionary authority. You're interpreting the part that it came from a remaining you, or left you, over discretionary. You told me the article where I could find that. I did. Yes. I, I yeah. Did. There's a lot in that article. Yeah, but that would be on top of that because you could still use that ADI or you could have used that. Yeah, ADI. There's no question that that ADI comes from that article. Yeah. yeah. Your interpretation that it's coming from some leftover fund. Is not accurate. Well, and how could you do that um, without bargaining that? Well, if you didn't have the money and the money was not authorized during the last contract, then where did the money come from without bargaining? That provision doesn't sunset. The provision of sunset? It doesn't sunset. It didn't go away. It didn't expire. This is not a conversation for this table, but that's... Yeah, well, I, I checked with our lawyers and they said that okay. the money should have been spent by August 7th. All right. And my second question is, 
So you're basically asking for across three years, a 15% raise mm -hmm. for all faculty who are minimum satisfactory. Yeah, exactly. And no, there's no kind of deviation for better performance. No, we, we talked about that last time when we were, were, were bargaining a contract. We are still dealing with a lot of salary discrepancies across all three campuses. If you look at the support that Tampa faculty gets, still in comparison to the St. Pete and Sarasota Manatee faculty, you will see that that support is just not there for our, and I'm saying that on purpose right now, satellite campuses, because that's how faculty over there are being so treated. These so, are quite a, only the set. I, I'm confused how the satellite campuses are applied. Well, because if you look at the salary discrepancies among the three campuses, you will see that Tampa salaries are much, much higher than the salaries so in the other campuses. They to be higher because everyone's getting 5%, so everyone's going to... Yeah, but if you, do, if you do the merit increases based on the formula with the people who have the highest averages on their annual performance evaluation, then you will reward Tampa faculty because the other faculty, like I just said, don't have the research support. They don't have all the support that Tampa faculty have, so they cannot perform at the level as Tampa faculty have. So if you do merit raises and tie that to a formula there, the people who are on top get more of that increase, you're actually going to widen the gap among those three campuses. Okay, so your argument is, yeah. is you don't want to award higher performing faculty. No, Tampa faculty already make much higher salaries than the other ones. And all higher performing faculty are in Tampa? No, not necessarily, but we did our homework on that. And most of the faculty who would be rewarded for that would be Tampa faculty. And you would be widening the salary gap among faculty, depending on which campus they are. And uh, and here I'm talking about instructors. I'm talking about all the faculty. Members. Well, all the faculty would be in unit faculty. Yes, all faculty. Right. And that is why we decided last time, the last contract that we bargained, it was for the first time in a very, very long time that we did not approve a formula. So we're not going to reward our higher performing faculty. Well, are you going to make sure that every faculty, regardless of where the faculty member has a primary place of employment, is going to get access to the same resources? Because let me tell you one thing, we have St. Pete and Sarasota Amenity faculty who still don't have graduate assistants. They still don't have access to PhD students, and that is where a lot of the publications are coming from. So if you are trying to tell me that the higher, and, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be in the future that we shouldn't go back to a formula, but right now we're still seeing huge discrepancies in salaries across those three campuses, and those need to be addressed. Not through the salary equity? Well, that's true, but if you are choosing a formula that is going to reward Tampa faculty because they are going to perform better simply because they have all the resources that are lacking in St. Pete and Sarasota Manatee, they will always be outperforming others. I mean, just look at our class sizes that they're different. I mean, I, we don't have TAs, we don't have GCAs, we don't have research assistants. It, it's still, the, the game is still stacked against faculty from the other two campuses. And what we're trying to do is uh, create fairness and address all these um, discrepancies. And that's one way to do it. And we had discussions about this during the last contract negotiations, and we all agreed on that. It was basically not that difficult. So, and before you go uh, to caucus, we also made some changes to Article 8. So, quick question on of this course. one. As the salary comparison document, I was just curious, it mentions comparison group. Is that the same group from this chart, do you know? Um, the single papers that we handed out, all three charts on the single papers, that came from a presentation that uh, the dean from the Moomaw College of Business gave to faculty in entrepreneurship. Do you know if the comparison group from this page is who that is? It's AAU schools. All AAU This schools. is all AAU? Those are all AAU. This is not all AAU. It says selected AAU. Yeah. This one, we know the schools on the first one. Uh, we said for selected AAU public B schools. So he pulled out out of the, how many do we have now? Because AAU increased its membership. It's now 50 or 73. 73. 
So he pulled out the comparison schools that for him, the dean of the College of Business were important. So I'm just, I assume we're talking about these same schools on this yes, page. Too. Yes, okay. that's how that's he portrayed it to okay. us. So, and then um, we... Wait, Chris has another question. I just want oh, of course. On this comparison, um, is there any normalization done for regional differences or state tax differences? I don't know. I would have to ask the dean. Considering that he is a PhD in finance, I believe he probably did something. So we were told that uh, we now have a job code for distinguished university professors. And we also were told that distinguished university professors are receiving pay increases at, at other institutions upon having received the appointment. So by popular demand, we put that in there. And then if we, uh, we compare ourselves to the other state universities in Florida, you will note that the 9% promotional increases are much, much lower than any of the other state universities, except for UNT, I believe. So we bumped it up to 12% from 9%. There are still schools that are higher than that. We have schools that have 14%. And here again, speaking as your chief negotiator and uh, your grievance chair, when you put uh, under summer appointments, one of the most egregious, uh, according to our faculty terms, is in e-summer appointment policy number one, the last two words, if practicable. So we struck them. And then under point four, you might remember that we agreed to a salary cap per summer course of $12,500 maximum when the university was going through a budget crunch and also the legislature demanded that we would, and the legislature de started demanding that students have to take a certain number of summer classes in order to help the university meet those goals, we agreed to cap the salaries for a three student credit hour course to 12,500, it used to be 12 and a half percent. So the university is doing much, much better. It has now received AAU and in order for the faculty to get compensated adequately, we struck the cap for 12 and a half percent. And I think that was the extent of the changes to that article that we made. Any okay. questions? I don't, does anyone else have a question? Do you have one solo for what the, the total cost would be of the um, well, our mathematics um, expert has not done his magic yet, but and the magic you did a couple of weeks ago, it and would... And while you're costing, can you cost out the summer? Well, summer basically has been profitable for the schools, so why is it that faculty are doing all the work and working at a discount, basically? We will prepare them. You want to take a focus? Okay, thank you. Are we ready? We are ready. Great. Well, first, we appreciate the opportunity to take a caucus, and um, we were able to have to look through all of this. There's obviously a lot here, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot to study, and we'll do our due diligence. Mm -hmm. If if you had you mentioned some costing information, could you explain that? It's so like, we we have our resident expert. But see, I see. You know, sometimes they say. This is the back of the envelope. It's <laughs> literally a back of an envelope. But it's only the back of the envelope because he did most of the computations on the computer and then the battery. <laughs> so according to the last uh, download we got from Jim's, the uh, payroll from the unit is $184,029,779. Of course, it keeps going up and down, but it's going to stay in that range. So you, we've got, we're asking for a 5% raise? In each year of in the each year. Okay, so each year what you do is you multiply by 1.05, uh, which means that the first raise will cost uh, uh, just a little over $9 million. That's all? Oops, well, okay. And the second, the second one will cost somewhat over $18 million. And the third one probably might just $28, 29 million, something like that. In that cost, I mean, each year you will add about $9 million in addition to the payroll. So over the third year, you'll have 9 plus 9 plus 9 in addition to what you have now. Of course, your funding will also increase. And that's just one piece of it, right? Uh, that's that just the 5%. That's just the 5%. Not the summer, not the promotion raises. 
Yeah, not the not the, the, the question. Is long enough for to do that. Okay, okay. Is he gonna is he gonna also hit on those things? Um, well, the promotion raises depends on how many people get promoted and who gets promoted. So um, and, and that I don't know too much about the history of that. And of course, summer salary is a classified secret protected for uh, for reasons of national security. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but he means that we've been asking for the summer budget and salaries for many, many times. Yeah, there's and we have not been transparency to, there. We have not been able to secure them from the university. It well, would make our processes <laughs> a lot easier. Yeah. Summer summer I, I see the difficulty in selling because it depends on who wants to teach and who's opting to teach and all that, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, but with regard to these other pieces, you're going to get around to look at them and sell. Well, we can get, we can get estimates based on uh, promotions in the past. I don't know how, how typical promotions of the last few years are. We can generally make approximate estimates here how much these promotions will cost based on that. Uh, do you get those figures from uh, your, the institute here on how much promotions cost year by year? You're asking, I'm asking you. you. Do we get how much promotions cost? How much promotions from, from the institute? From the university. From the university. Do you have those years by number? We by could um, maybe get it, I guess. You could. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get it from the uh, therapist. I was just curious whether or not they told, gave you that information. All right. I haven't specifically asked. All right. We have. That's what happened. Well, with that, we'll take this back and work on it. And So two questions. Last time I already asked you, we had a Chapter 6 proposal, uh, Article 6 proposal. Very too many classes, so it's not chapter. It's Article 6 proposal. And last time we were told that you, the team, had not had time to work through it. So you couldn't give us an answer on that uh, Article 6 proposal, and then we were also wondering if you are planning on putting a proposal on ETR on the table. Our Article 6 uh, proposal that we gave you last time, we're still happy with that. So um, We made a counter proposal to that. I know, and we're going to counter back with what we had put on the table before, because we still think that's the appropriate language of the contract. We're not going to pick up and accept the language that you propose, and we can bring that in in writing. Yeah, that, that would be okay. And then also, when is the university planning on putting a PDR proposal for the? I mean, if if PDR basically eliminates tenure as we know it, so and it is mandatory subject to bargaining as we were told, so we're not going to write, we're not going to put a PDR on the table. But you should be doing that because you tell us that you have to follow the laws. So you are probably better prepared to do that then. Well, we'll, uh, as, as a bargaining team, we'll think about that. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank You're you welcome. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, Thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.